Hey guys, figured I'd show you a project that I've started recently. Uh, it is a 2007 Toyota FJ Cruiser that is getting a body swap. The reason for the body swap is I purchased it with, after it, it had been slid off the road in the snowstorm and wrinkled up the body pretty good. I'll attach some pictures or a clip of the b old body off of it. But the frame, all good condition, it just pushed in the A-pillar on the passenger side and messed the door up. I guess both doors driver's side. But I'll attach some pictures for you. Frame, beautiful condition, rust-free fr frame. Good strong running engine. Uh, transmission, good condition. It ran and drove. This actually drove into the garage a few days ago, probably about a week now, when I lifted that body off. This body is exact same color, everything. Great condition. Great condition as far as dents go and it hasn't hit a tree. Has some more rust than the other one did, but it has all its A pillars intact. So this is the body that's gonna go on. The interesting part about the swap is this is a body off of an automatic. I purchased this in Massachusetts at a rotten frame. Body really isn't in too bad a shape rust wise. Just needs a uh, rocker panel repair. But that's easy enough. So far, not many problems with the compatibility between automatic and manual transmission bodies. Just need a uh, punch a few holes through, like one down in here for slave cylinder. I need to cut the, I don't know if you can see it. No, I'll get better videos later. Uh, cut the shifter hole out a little bit bigger so I can use the plate off of the manual setup. It appears I'm gonna to need to swap the wiring harness from the manual body, just so I get features like the cancel clutch start. But all in all, really straightforward. I had the rotten frame off of this body in probably about an hour and a half. Had this one body off and everything, probably two hours. Just had a couple more electrical connections I had to deal with, but really straightforward when you lift the body off, all the fuel stays with, you know, all the fuel lines and all that, stay with the engine and the frame. Uh, I had to clip a couple brake lines, like the ones that go to the back right here from the master cylinder and then I clipped the ones coming down from the master cylinder to here just because they were on the rustier side and figure might as well not waste time dealing with rusty brake lines and I have it to this point. I may do headers before I pit it back together. I haven't decided if I just wanna get it together and have a running and driving FJ or if I want to take the time while I'm here and make it nice. But so far, all in all between purchasing the crashed one, which still has clean title and all that, no insurance claim was done. Uh, between purchasing this one and purchasing the donor body, I have under three grand invested. This one has 
I believe it was high 100, like 190,000 miles, maybe 200,000. But it's a Toyota, nothing to really worry about. Uh, they both are TRDs. So they have rear locker. This one being that it's a manual, it's four wheel drive, all wheel drive. No two wheel drive. Yeah, I'll keep you guys all updated on the progress. I'll try to make a time lapse of dropping the body back down. Maybe I'll set the camera up and show me cutting the holes out for the slave and for the shifters. Thanks. Keep me posted. Hey, guys update on the fj cruiser project uh so today's progress has been got this piece pulled out it's a clutch pedal holder got this piece pulled out also a clutch pedal holder those are all pulled out of the donor body or sorry the the bad body and then on the good body today, I got upper hole for the clutch drilled out. That's for the slave line to go through. And then I got those two holes drilled. So this piece can just fit right in there. Once I get that, once I actually get the pedal mounted up, I'm gonna tack or spot weld it in to those two holes. The other piece is going to be a little bit more difficult because that gets welded in from the inside inside of the automatic as of now. Now you can't see a whole lot when you get a light going. Everything's all torn apart. Dash and all messed up over there. Harness stripped. Tough working on it with it on the left. Can't open the doors all the way, it makes it a pain. Need to get headers for the engine and then a set of brake lines and then I'll slide it beneath there, make it a lot easier to work on. But doing what I can for now. Also got the fuse box split apart because People who yanked the engine out of this just cut one of the lines off. Had to split it to get to the other end of the wire. Not sure where that goes right now. It's either a ground or a positive. Figure that out when I get there. That's the line that they cut out. Uh, right here, we got the automatic harness. Then over here, we got the manual harness all laid out. Really not much difference between the two. I'm sure these big plugs have different pinouts, but easier just to pull it instead of tracing wires and doing all that. Because the only things I really need from it are the clutch cancel start, clutch pedal sensor, a harness that doesn't need a automatic neutral sensor. So this whole harness will be getting listed for sale on eBay or Facebook very shortly. Uh, let's see, what else can I show you? Over here, automatic brake pedal, that's gonna get listed for sale. Manual ECU, which is gonna get installed, same tabs as far as mounting goes and all that. Bunch of FJ parts, BMW grill. Uh, down there I got the manual FJ parts, clutch pedal assembly. Uh, let's see, HD on the other side is what I wanted to show you. Right here, 
is an automatic ECU. Different part numbers. Can't see much of it, but right there, 35B80, 35B91. Uh, I believe, oh, four wheel drive control. Yeah, this is for the ADD and the front differential, which the manual is doing I have. So no need for that. Master cylinder. I believe the masters are the same. Haven't completely compared them yet, but I'll deal with that when we get there. Yeah, we gotta show you some, some progress. Over here, we got the crashed body, rotten frame. I'm gonna strip whatever I need off this and then scrap and sell whatever is worthwhile. Running boards are actually pretty solid on this, so I'm gonna take those off for the, my project. Here's the other FJ, stripped out. You can see it better because it's in the daylight. Oh sevens did not have any uh what do they call it? Ignition lockout or whatever immobilizer. So I'm just gonna leave the old key. Uh get the driver door, it's in good shape. Fender, it's in shape. Just gonna save the fender. I'm gonna put this door on because it's in better condition than the other one. So I'm gonna swap out locks off the other side. You can see the boogered up A pillar. Right here is where that clutch perch sits, the upper mount, more triangular one. Those are two holes in there, or I suppose three holes that I drilled in the, in the good body. This side, I just cut out with a torch because they had extra sheet metal covering the the spot welds, so I'll figure that out. For this one, I'm probably gonna sawzall off the whole quarter panel, or I guess whole side, including A pillar. Just so I have spares, this is for sale, whatever, more than scrap value. Uh, the upper side where I torched out the old or the clutch perch that I need. The same holes I showed you previously. I drilled in the other one. I don't do a perfect job on the upper hole for the slave, but it'll be okay. Now I'll show you some more damage to this. It was a lot worse when I first got it, but I wasn't gonna chop top it. So I tried pulling it out with a, a winch, homemade frame machine. And yeah, it would have been good for what I initially planned on doing, but then I found this body for dirt cheap. So that's what I went with. This is the frame that was on the donor. See how rotten it is. Whole back's ripped off. Holes throughout the whole fucking thing. Missing all the body mounts in the back. I just sawed all the front of the frame off. Like it was already rotten, so it doesn't matter, but. Then we got the front diff with the ADD. Gonna pull that. If CVs are the same, I'm gonna pull those. Everything else is gonna hit the scrapper. Besides, again, running boards, cause these are some beefy ones. Just gonna fix the bit of rot in the corners of them both. Get some new tube, weld them in, cut them shorter or something. And this may show you a, a little bit of how bad it was before. That's the passenger door, how wrinkled it is. The hood you can't really see. But yeah, that's where I'm at. Hey guys, another update on the FJ Cruiser body swap. Uh, so, Ran into a few more things as far as differences go between the manual and auto bodies. Nothing too crazy. Uh, 
ended up having to swap out the fuse box here along with the harness that's built into it. Figured that'd just be easier instead of tearing apart the old fuse box out of the auto because the pain just to separate it, let alone figure out what wires I need, cut looms, all that. So the harness I just swapped out. Like Originally, I was hoping I would just have to swap the main body harness off, but, or I'd do that so I could gain the clutch cancel start button. And that was pretty much the only thing that was different between these, those two harnesses. And then I swapped out this harness. It's a lot longer than it actually appears when you have it all in there. Uh, that's just the fuse box, light harnesses. Uh, these plugs go over to the, See, the, this side went over to like the driver side, left hand drive, driver side, uh, footwell. That's where this body harness, these plugs plug into these plugs. And then this side right here goes over into the passenger side footwell near where like the ECM sits. Had to swap that out because this is the harness that holds the clutch pedal sensor. Both clutch pedal sensors. I think there was two of them. But easy enough. Just took a little bit of time. Don't need that power steering pump or sorry, power steering reservoir because this mine's sitting attached to the frame, so hooked up to power steering. Master cylinders are the same. I ended up just using the one that was already in the manual body, not the auto body, just because I knew I wouldn't run into any more problems with that. Uh, I bl believe I showed you in the last one, holes drilled out for slave to come through down here, mounting brackets for the third pedal. Uh, the worst part about swapping the fuse box harness was honestly lifting up the wiper louver so I could get to the plug on the motor for the wipers, but really easy enough. I was thinking I was gonna have to swap another harness because I was thinking this was a transmission plug over here that runs down the firewall, but that's for tail lights and both those plugs are the same. All my transmission plugs as far as a like, neutral sensor and all that stay attached when you lift it so that made that easy hop inside here at least open the door doesn't open much sitting on the car lift with no frame so it makes it a pain but got the dash all back together and then Everything's in besides that kick panel down there. Left that out because I still need to wire or plug in the the engine side. Uh, but yeah, I got everything else going. That's all in. Everything you see is hooked and plugged in. Uh, down here, the yaw sensors are different between the manual and the auto. The auto sits up here. I've already enlarged up the hole. I'm gonna clean it up a little bit more, but I wanna get the transmission and everything beneath it and have the body bolts going through so I know what I need to trim up and how much bigger I need to make it. But I made a template. I threw it through the hole already based off the other one and that's pretty much it. Uh, but yaw sensor. Sits right here on the manual body. 
but as you can see there's not the bolt hole right there but i'm just going to drill a hole put a riv nut in there so that'll be easy this hole is in the correct spot just no passenger side hole for it but again that's easy stuff uh you have to put holes in here to hold the plate down which is right here let's see if i can get it there sit something like that cutting the hole is fairly easy worst part is trimming up the upper layer without cutting the bottom layer but just took a little bit of time i'm sure if i used my air chisel it would have been a little bit faster but didn't want to fuck it up too bad uh one more harness i did have to change is this one so you gotta record that's really just like the speaker harness. So you try and get the light shined. Not the best lighting. I need to get more lights that actually shine inside of my car lift now. Uh, this is just a speaker harness. Uh, speaker plugs. Speaker plugs. Only reason I needed to change this out was because on the manual main body harness it has female plugs on the other side so when i hooked when i had the main body harness in and i got the dash back in i realized that this harness has females and the other harness off the manual has male plugs would have been easy enough just the clip ends and splice it or push the pins out and repin it but i figure i got the toyota harness might as well have it be as factory as possible but definitely in pain having to pull the dash back out and put it back in i haven't have anything bolted in yet so it's just how it was sitting getting it out but again it sucks taking the dash off with the doors not being able to open more than what you see here passenger side opens a little bit more but still not enough and with no battery i can't roll the windows down to give me more room this side it can't open the back door on the left other side i can open it but once you have both doors open you can't get out uh let's see but down here i got three pedals and then i got the the dead pedal on the far left out of the manual it wasn't a perfect fit on, I think I broke this one when I took it off. This one's bigger, obviously. These two holes are spaced a little bit closer together on the automatic body than they are on the manual body. But with a little bit of force, it went on and like, see if I can get my foot down there and show you. Like it's not going anywhere and all it's going to do is rest the, your foot when you're not pushing the clutch. But clutch pedal assembly obviously came off the manual. Uh, I took the manual brake pedal because the foot plate on it is a little bit smaller. So if you're wearing boots it's going to be easier not to catch the brake when you push the clutch. Which is always nice to not jam the clutch in. see anything else that i've done to it today really nothing else that i've done to it today as far as i can remember for tomorrow let me get rid of that for tomorrow i'm thinking i'm probably gonna set the body back on to the frame let me squeeze out of here I guess, oh, the door won't shut because I got the weather strip hanging down. Yeah, tomorrow I'm probably going to set the body back down on the frame. At least get it to about where it's going to sit so I can finish up cutting 
the tunnel out for two sticks opposed to one stick. And I might end up bolting it back together and at least seeing if, if it's gonna fire. Like, it should run it. The manual drove into here. But the only concern I would really have, or the only thing stopping me from bolting it all together is I really don't want to do long tube headers. But I don't know if I'm going to even keep the machine when I'm done with it. So I don't know if I want to fork out six, seven hundred bucks for long tube headers to not really like it. I had a four, fourth gen 4Runner, which is virtually the same. But I don't know if I like the visibility in it. It's a little bit tighter than I, want, I expected. I've always wanted one, but we'll see what I end up doing. I could get it back together and start it tomorrow. Won't be able to drive it because I still haven't ordered brake lines. Been wanting to look for a better deal on them, but I don't want to make my own just being that Toyota still sells them. I make enough of my own on other cars where they're not produced anymore. But yeah, that's that's today's project or progress. I'll do an update tomorrow when I do anything else to it. Thanks. Hey guys, little progress update on the FJ. Uh, haven't been able to work on it a whole lot the past few days, but got a little bit done to it. Mainly just rolled the frame back, lined it all up, dropped the body down on it. So now it's sitting, no car lift, auto bodies on the manual frame. Didn't do anything too major to it so far. Uh, swapped out a few ABS connectors from the old one just because I broke a couple. Uh, got some of the EVAP lines hooked up. Clutch line ran to where it needs to be. Still gotta give it a little tweak because I kind of messed with it a bit to get it in there. Uh, windshield cowl back on beneath the wipers going gonna need to source a little rubber guy that goes on top of there so mine was all dry rotted i might have one from the wrecked body but i think that was gone when i got it uh all the shit like mirrors i'm gonna need a new mirror for this one but as you can see, or you may be able to see, yeah, probably not be able to see, but shifter, it's all in. I'll get more views with, or some better lighting for you in a minute, once I get it all wired up. But it's all in. You can hit all gears, all that, plenty of room. This bumper's all mangled up, but I'm gonna put my old one on, which I believe is this right here. Yeah, that's it. But, yeah. Gonna finish doing a couple things to it and then see if it fires. Haven't put the, haven't put the bolts or the nuts on the bottom of this yet. The body bolts. Figure I'll see if I need to do any more weird wiring stuff, but I really don't think I will. In case I want to lift the body back off. I just want to hear it crank first. But yeah, that's it for right now. Gonna keep working on it and I'll make another little update. Hey guys, got some progress on the FJ cruiser swap for you. Uh so we got Battery in, engine in, uh, master, or sorry, slave cylinders in. Everything's hooked up. Only thing I'm missing right now is brake lines. 
but those are gonna stay missing until they get delivered. And AC line that goes from compressor to condenser. But everything else is all hooked up. N needs an air filter. Just running a cone one, but since the body was smashed, air filter's junk, so I need to get a new one. Probably gonna end up removing this this piece. May not, we'll see. Oh, I should probably keep that in there. But everything's in, wired up. Body mounts are in, bolted down, all tightened up. Uh, let me get my flashlight. Put the garage all cleaned up for the most part, or at least swept up. You have everything in here is all set. Might have a leaky uh, clutch line, not sure. Had no pedal feel before. Uh, steering link is in. All tightened up and everything. I believe the steering is all aligned. Doors on. Trim's all buttoned up in here. Only thing that's not in is the plug down there, which is sitting right there on the yaw sensor. I drilled and put a riv nut in on this bolt down here. Probably can't even see it. That bolt right there. Threw a riv nut on there, so that's all good like it would be from the factory more or less got the shifter boot pit on uh, let's see what else as you can see you got power to the dash it shows the key illuminating or the door light everything shifts like it should still no clutch pedal So you just go straight down and stays down. You need to bleed the slave out. But get this thing in neutral for you. Dash all works. Let's see. All illuminate. Clutch cancel start button. Illuminate is in neutral. Fires up. I got the VSC lights on, maintenance required, and all that. If I recall correctly, that all. All that's gonna go away once I drive it forward and backward a couple feet. I was moving it today on the starter using the clutch cancel button. Just moved it forward and I rolled it back. So all that works. But coming together, e-brake cables are in. Gonna need to adjust them, I, I believe. Oh yeah, I know I'm going to need to adjust them because it's the same e-brake cables that were in the old body or old frame or I guess the same should I say but doors, windows, all that shit works like it should tailgate now opens now that I have power going to it and only things interior wise that need to go in is this piece and then that piece right there. And then the boot. 
I got this guy, I took off the crash body. It's gas cap cover, that's gonna go on. Gonna paint it up first. I'm gonna swap out my old tailgate off the crash body because it's in a little bit better shape than this one. Uh, gonna pull this bumper off. Wasn't able to pull it off before because I couldn't get to most of the bolts because I couldn't open the door. But I got a bumper right here, tire cover, a grill right down there. Still has no coolant in it, but that's all the little stuff. Uh, only plugs on the bottom that aren't, or in the back side that aren't put on is the one right behind this piece right here, which goes to the park sensor. But this bumper doesn't have it. I probably ripped it off when I lifted it, but this bumper does, so that makes it nice and easy to swap in bumpers. But all coming together. Needs a front bumper on. Haven't decided if I'm gonna put new front bumper on. Well, I have it at this stage. If I'm just gonna throw the old one back on. Probably gonna end up buying an off-road bumper. So I'll just say, forget it about putting one on now. I imagine if I put an off-road bumper on, I'm gonna need to cut these flaps back, the inner fender liners. Still need to get a mirror for the passenger side. So of course, the passenger side on my old one was one that it's all smashed. So I have spare driver, no passenger, so I need to order a passenger. But once brake lines come in and I figure the clutch out, then it will be drivable. And like, I guess I could drive it without the brake lines once I figure the clutch out. I'm gonna try and do that tomorrow. But everything, everything needed to make it run is obviously there. You heard it run. Gonna rip most of these stickers off. I don't really mess with stickers. Like maybe a couple tasteful ones, but not, not any sticker I can find. Debating on getting a rear bumper for it instead of pinning that one on. Then I lose my backup sensors, I believe. But yeah, right now just trying to get it drivable so I can daily it for at least a few days, see if I like it or if I don't like it. I like my fourth gen 4Runner and they're pretty much the same thing, so I don't see why I wouldn't. So that's all for now. Probably gonna compile all the video and upload it. Thanks for stopping in.